I am a beauty editor and copywriter here at Scentbird. I started in this industry just right after college. I didn't know working in a beauty department at a magazine was a thing until I started interning at beauty departments and magazines. And it makes sense because I was raised on YM and Cosmo Girl and Seventeen. I absolutely loved the beauty sections. So once I kind of got into that world and saw just how it could be an extension of your own creative expression and the science that goes into each and every product that's made, I was hooked immediately. I was like, this is it. I am not turning back. And my mom likes to tell a story about how when I was younger, I was like, oh, she was always, well, you can't really make a career out of beauty. You can't really make a career out of doing makeup. But I guess I kind of proved her wrong because I was at InStyle for about seven years. I started there right after college. It was 2010 and it was a really interesting time because I had started on the digital team at the time. Digital was kind of considered an afterthought of the print edition, but that quickly changed as the internet grew and evolved and digital became more of a huge focus for them. So I was there for seven years. I eventually branched out and started working with brands like Tarte, Pat McGrath, and of course, Scentbird. And as I was kind of discovering how to write in a brand's tone of voice, I did miss my first home, which was editorial. And I've done a lot of freelance work for editorial publications like Birdie, Who, What, Where, Elle, Seventeen. <laughs> and I do some on-air segments for KTLA and California Live. The fragrance stories that are catching my attention these days are a lot of the trend pieces because I love hearing about innovation and the cool new things that perfumers are doing in the industry right now. Back when I first started, clean fragrance wasn't really a thing, but it's really interesting to see how each brand is taking their own ethos on what is clean and incorporating that into fragrance. I also love just what's going on in the fragrance world, what people are liking, and I'm really pleased to know that vanilla fragrances are back. This is Kayali's Vanilla 128. And it really just sings to the 90s girl within me that was like raised on juice bar fragrances and those really, really sweet gourmands that I will always love in my heart of hearts. But these vanilla fragrances now are a bit more elevated and not as cloying. Some of the stories that are top of mind for me at Scentbird are just kind of discovering these new niche perfume houses that I didn't know about before. The world of fragrance is constantly expanding, kind of like the universe. And I always love hearing the stories behind these really niche fragrance houses that are kind of poised to be the next big thing. I'm always interested in what's new on the market and what people are interested in. And I kind of like to, I mean, maybe it's the editor in me, but I kind of like to forecast and get ahead of the trends and figure out, hey, this fragrance house has a really interesting story and they're doing something different that other fragrance houses aren't doing. And on Scentbird, we have, gosh, like, 600 fragrances in counting and a lot of the brands that we're currently signing are these really luxury niche houses that I didn't know about before and I'm completely in love with them now. So some fragrance trends that I've been seeing in 2023 are again vanilla fragrances. They're back baby. They're back and they're better than ever instead of the overly sweet notes that we were used to back in the 90s and 2000s when I grew up, you're getting more of a sensual twist. You're getting more of a luxurious twist. You're getting vanilla mixed with patchouli and deeper notes to really give it that depth because, you know, vanilla's grown and evolved. So we have as well. One fragrance pop culture moment that caught my attention is just how Perfumes de Marley Delina just kind of exploded on TikTok. It's a beautiful scent. I love florals, so of course I would align with this lush floral blend, but I just love seeing people who didn't really know about the fragrance house or were discovering fragrance for the first time really just like establishing Delina as that scent that that girl wears. I think the same thing can be said about Baccarat Rouge 540. It is a lush, sexy, floral scent that smells great on anybody, but I've really been loving, at least in TikTok culture, just everybody coming up with different dupes for it because it's quite an expensive scent, and if you don't want to drop 
I don't know, what is it, $300 on a full-size bottle, you can find a Sol de Janeiro scent. It's the one in the pink bottle, and it smells almost exactly like that. So that's what I love about fragrance pop culture and I guess TikTok culture coming into the fragrance world. Some fragrances that I'm loving the most these days, I've really been loving this fragrance by Our Side. It's a beautiful black-owned fragrance line that was started in New York. Their fragrance nostalgia to me, it's floral-based, but with some depth, it smells like a warm hug and the happiest memory you've ever had. Probably like a memory of spraying on perfume like a big girl. I've also been loving the Ellis Brooklyn Florist fragrance. It's just a gorgeous, again, I love my florals. How cute is that bottle? Bright pink. It goes with everything I have going on here. And it's just a really, not overly complex floral blend, but it has some depth again to it. And it has this rich, sweet, fruity note that I kind of went for in my younger days. So it has a little bit of that nostalgia for me, but it's really elevated, really elegant. Every time I wear it, I always get compliments and people are like, what is that? And I'm like, it's Florist by Ellis Brooklyn. It just came out on March 1st, so relatively new, and I can't stop smelling myself now. Another fragrance that I'm really loving that's, it's been discontinued. I can't believe I'm showing this to you. Maybe don't be like me and use like really right perfume, but YSL Baby Doll. This was the holy grail that first turned me on to fragrance in the first place. I remember spending three hours in Sephora in like, the year 2000, or whenever this dropped, you can do the historical stuff. But whenever this came out, I just remember spending hours in Sephora smelling this beautiful, beautiful gem of a perfume. To me, it smells like, gosh, it smells like Legally Blonde on repeat, the color pink personified. It's a beautiful blend of like cassis and some... I guess pineapple and some beautiful white florals. I keep saying beautiful, but that's what it means to me. Oh my gosh. And it really just like, it takes me there. It takes me back. I love the transformative nature of fragrance where you smell this and you remember exactly what you were doing on October 3rd, 2003. And YSL's baby doll really does that for me. This is me petitioning YSL to relaunch this, please. It was discontinued in 2006 and bottles have been very hard to come by. And I came across this one in just a random beauty store in a mall in Koreatown out here in LA. And as soon as I smelled it, I was like, that's it. I will pay whatever price that is because I have to have YSL's baby doll in my life. It's one of those fragrances that I kind of wear for special occasions whenever I want to feel that nostalgia or whenever I want to feel like the best Marianne I can be. And recently when I started doing these on-air segments, I would spray it on just beforehand to give me that boost of confidence and to be able to turn it on when I needed to for the cameras. And scent is really funny because you start making these connections in your brain like, oh, this reminds me of this whenever I spray on YSL's baby doll. So it's simultaneously now reminds me of my happy, happy childhood memories in Sephora and these new things that I'm doing today. I think the most exciting thing in the fragrance world lately is all, again, all of the innovation that goes into creating a formula and creating everything from base note to top note. I feel like people are getting very, very creative when it comes to the notes that they use. There's a brand called Skylar that I think is doing a lot of really amazing things, all clean formulations, but they have this one note in their vanilla sky fragrance that actually mimics everything you love about the best cup of cappuccino that you've ever had. It's a gorgeous gourmand. And I think that extra cappuccino note, which is synthetic, but very, very scientific, it gives it so much more depth and range than, you know, a lot of the other vanilla fragrances that I was raised on. I think people are getting just so creative and I can't wait to see what the future holds in terms of notes, whether you're creating them in a lab or just discovering like, I can do this with a pink pepper note. It sounds unusual, but it works. I envision that the future of fragrance will be a lot more sustainable just from beginning to the complete product. So I feel like a lot of 
brands are putting just a huge focus on sustainability, whether that's using just post-consumer recycled glass, making sure everything is recyclable, all the way down to the notes that they're using. People want to make less of an environmental impact, but also have the notes that they just love and make the fragrance whole. I think the future of fragrance will definitely be a focus on non-toxic ingredients. For a while, I feel like, you know, I would spray on a fragrance and I didn't know what in the formulation was irritating me, but it had to be something. But because I loved my whatever Victoria's Secret love spell, whether it was triggering somebody's asthma attack or making me itchy, like I didn't really care because it smelled good. But I think people are taking a closer look at what's going into the fragrances because it's on your skin that impacts you in some way. You want ingredients that are less irritating for you to breathe in as well as less irritating for your skin. 